Welcome, everybody. Tuesday evening, we are coming at you. So this hour, we are going to talk tennis with Molly McElwee. Very interesting piece on the uh, mass exodus in the women's division, uh, top-level tennis. Molly has been writing about that. That is on the way. We will have a slight tangent between eight and nine. Myself, Arthur, Michael and Will will natter on about various things. Kenny Cunningham is in studio, is the uh, redemptive news, though. 53106. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. Kenny, hello. It's a good word, that. What, what type of... What, how did you describe it? Redemptive. Redemptive. After Arthur, Michael, Will and I simply talk without much of a plan, which is what <laughs> a slight tangent is, that's our eight to nine hour. <laughs> it's important to have some gravitas in the studio. Gotcha. Richie McCormick also with us. Further redemption. Hello, Richie. Yeah, oh, that's a doubtful job, but thank you very much for that. Evening, Kenny. All right, I can barely see you there, Richie. Not on the big screen tonight. He's straight ahead of you there, Kenny. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. And that, that's not a big screen. Oh, there. All right. That's you. Right. <laughs> gotcha now, Richie. Gotcha. Richie, Kenny and I have already recorded a good oh, proportion Lord. of the football show. Okay. There is some good stuff in this. Yeah. Boy, did we go off on one. So, uh, low bar, Rich. We started a really low the bar to see. The, there is the, the puff of the cheeks there, Kenny. Mutual, yeah, mutual disgust that we all mm -hmm. last night sat down and thought, documentary on Liam Brady's career. I'm looking forward to this. And then for some reason, Denzel Washington movie was on. <laughs> we don't know what happened. The Phantom Liam Brady documentary, which we're all looking forward to. Kenny, it's uh, cleared the schedule. Uh, me, likewise, didn't seem to appear. That was one uh, talking point. Stephen Carr at his peak as good as any right back in the world okay. and then my favourite line from the era which is on the way I'm not going to give too much context but according to Kenny Ashley Cole do me a favour <laughs> in, terms in terms of, of comparison of... in terms of comparison Rich with um, it was Dennis uh, Dennis here and that one comes up every so often doesn't it the best uh, you know, the best yeah, team yeah. or whatever the last 20 to tour the years in England etc etc seems to be um yeah, a consensus amongst the uh, uh, broadcasting fraternity in the UK that Ashley Cole, it's not even a conversation. No, chalk uh, him in, move on. To be had, yeah. So. Do me a favour, said Kenny. Well, funnily enough, um, sorry, Rich, um, just labouring the point, just popped into my head there. I think uh, for, uh, Roy done a thing with Patrick Vieira a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember it. You they, did, yeah. yeah they sat down in studio and, and they picked their the best team from learn. that era Man <laughs> Manchester United and Arsenal didn't they and they, that was clearly a bone of contention the uh, left back position and Roy was obviously for uh, well not for obvious reasons for the reasons probably that Roy said yeah. just wasn't wasn't entertaining the argument I think that was the one position they had to agree to disagree Yeah, neither would back down because yeah. Vieira equally and it shows we're all biased Vieira equally was like oh Roy be serious yeah but I find that hard because I'm not one of these rich who's like I had an Ireland jersey on he has to be the best Irish player of all time you know what I mean yeah. I can kind of park that to an extent and just kind of dissect but I don't know how you feel about it the two of them but for, I'm not saying I'm not talking down Ashley Carl I totally overrated he played at a very high level he was a wonderful uh, left back but at, at their peak at their best for me Dennis was always the better the, the most all rounded player um, defensively and offensively I think I think he was kind of head and shoulders. That's not being too disrespectful to Cole, but it was as easy for me. I think, for want of a better term, and with all due respect to Dennis, he's not the sexiest of players. Um, and his profile is completely hemmed in by the 90s. So we're getting further and further away from that, obviously. So I think if you don't have a massive media profile, and Ashley Cole has kind of retained that through one reason or another, you get to keep your prominence in people's minds when they're picking these kind of teams. But like, Dennis here, like, there's an argument to be made that he could probably be as good a right back as he was a left back, and he played there often enough uh, at international level and for Manchester United and for Oldham and for Leeds uh, before that. Like, it, he's he's an incredible footballer and and one of just remarkable consistency, and that's not something that should be taken lightly but, but often that's the is. definition of a top class yeah. world class player yeah. Richie isn't it like 100%. a high level of consistency and this, this lad wasn't playing like play championship football the game at Alden before he got the move but this high level of consistency came at the, probably the, one of the biggest if not the biggest uh, club in the world competing for the, the big titles year in year out yeah. so I mean it's, that's what we're talking about I don't remember him but ever and, and, being and in trouble it, or skinned in a game do you? Yeah. Do you remember, and, and, and at a crucial you, point Erwin no, like and, oh someone get him off John O'Shea Ronaldo no. style I don't remember him ever a, having a day like that well Mick McCarthy won told him he had to prove himself to him so that's another thing uh, but like he's the guy at a crucial period in, in Alex Ferguson's career like Ferguson has just saved his own career at Manchester United and one of his main signings in that summer is to go out and get Dennis Irwin 
uh, to bolster his defense. Like it's, he's just, he's up there. He really is up there. Like it shows you the faith that a top level manager had in such a player like him and to keep him there for the guts of a decade, which he did uh, pretty much unchallenged. Uh, there were the odds player to come and go, which kind of tested him, but he was better than them all. And there is a very solid argument to be made that he is indeed uh, better than Ashley Cole. Oh yeah. Do you like Richie's slide dig at Mick there as well, Kenny? Yeah, I know. I let that one go. I didn't saw that. I, I, I saw the, in, the, yeah. the face. I saw. <laughs> hang on. Was it a dig? Yeah, I, it yeah. Dig, it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Now let's leave. Let's skip over it. <laughs> Where is this Liam Brady documentary gone? That's a, oh, it's got to be coming. Isn't got it? to be coming. Has it has it been aired before? Is that the thing? Because that no, Denzel Washington, no, this is that new. Denzel Washington film has been aired before. No, that was a six time. Was it not on last night? It was meant to be. It was scheduled. It was. That's what. This is the big. This is the whole. This oh, is the. Man. Conversation, like, like I was so confused. I was parked on the sofa waiting for it to come on, and yeah. and uh, Film came Denzel on. came on, and the train carriage to start it out. I even hung on for RT plus one. I was saying to make sure I had missed it, and Denzel was hanging out there as well. So I don't know. It's a good move. I do like that mm. equaliser. I'd have to say. How often have you watched those equal? Rich, how often no. have you watched those equaliser movies? Is first this like? Is it first one's far better than the second? Don't get me wrong. Have you seen about Joe? You haven't, have you? I haven't. Wouldn't right, be my cup of tea. Right. Rich, right, I'm going to redirect towards yeah, you. On. Both the Equalizer movies, have you seen them? No. You haven't? No. See, I'm, more, I'm more familiar with the, what was it, there used to be a TV show, The Equalizer, that would be on really late. Oh, that was back in the 80s. Without, no, no without, Denzel, Denzel without, Washington Equalizer now. Without knowing much about it, I just oh, presume it's generic, generic action no. movie, three out of five, no? No, do you know what? I, I just feel, it came maybe I'm a few years I'm getting a nod from to, Pete there. Pete, no, that's exactly what it no, is. Generic, no, three-star, ah, no, brain-dead action movie. First, no, dead. first Equalizer movie. Turn off your brain. No. Really good watch. Really good watch. What's that, Pete? One-dimensional characters? I hear what you're saying. One-dimensional characters? Are you telling me they're not? Well, like, Rocky wasn't a one-dimensional character. You're not having Rocky, you're not having Rocky either, no? You had to change in Rocky IV. Come Jeez. on. Jeez. People change. John Wayne, was he a one-dimensional character, was he? Pete? Well, the fact that you're Why saying... Why are we referencing Pete anyway, as if he's the... He's the <laughs> arbiter. Dalai Lama. Good, what, what? good taste. The fact that you said John Wayne as opposed to any of his characters would suggest <laughs> they were all fairly one-note, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing by what I said, the equaliser. So you like Jack Reacher and all that business, do you? Uh, no, I've read, a bo- I've read a few of them books. They're easy read. I'll give you that. No, I take your point to an extent, but I like that equaliser. That's, uh, <laughs> you're underselling that, Pete. <laughs> uh, equaliser 53106, let us know. Please, is it worth Richie and I sacrificing two hours of our valuable, valuable time? The Russian mob, mob, the Russian mob in there. Is it the, the Irish, Irish, ma- Irish, ma- the Irish Mafia as well? Do you, do you know what? Kenny, do you know what you'd like? Do you know what you'd like? I just finished watching the second series of it. They put the two series back to back on Apple TV. Uh, Slow Horses. Oh, yeah. A minute, uh, Rich. A minute, Rich. Uh, you, you know, it's very good, isn't it? It's very, very good. good, yeah. Just jumped from White Lotus to Slow Horses. Are you, How the Loop you on a Netflix stock the whole show, last couple of years, yeah. Done? White Lotus? Yeah, I've just I've checked out. Your street. Yeah. That would be up your street as well. Funny enough, you'd like this el- el- espionage, Gary Alban, the whole smear. No, no. So I'm going to throw something back at you, right? Funny enough, only because I thought of um, Rich. I think we've spoken about it before, possibly not. Yeah. Uh, Joe, we were talking about Graham Potter earlier, the Chelsea manager. Well, we were meant to. What but popped we into my head? Oh, we weren't. We we're meant to be talking. We went about, off yeah. on a massive tangent. Man, Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Kenny, we've been here. We've been here, Kenny. Rich, we've been here. We did. Rich we, we knows. Did a countdown of favorite Potters. Rich we knows. Did a countdown of favorite Potters, and I was presenting one night. Brian Potter. Uh, Beatrix was in there. Brian Potter was in there. Maureen uh, was also on the list. So too. forget about the equalizer. So let, forget about the eagle. We're going to recommend anything for anybody to watch in the new year. <laughs> make one. Phoenix Knight. <laughs> did Harry make the list? Series one. Phoenix Knight. <laughs> Peter K. Brian Potter. One hundred percent. That's yeah. my recommendation. Oh, no. Anybody, any age group. Have a look at it and come back to me and tell you know, me how to find that Do you know what I was watching recently? Uh, the Patient with Donald Gleeson and Steve Carell. Right. Quite interesting. Donald Gleeson plays a very troubled, creepy patient of Steve Carell, who's a psychologist. I won't give much more away than that. And it's just 10, 25-minute pieces. Right. Basically, it's just a, a, a two-person... Dialogue. I mean, there's another, yeah, but it's, it's very intense and it's excellent. And I was just thinking, <laughs> Steve Carell must be about the most underrated talent in Hollywood given that he can play deadly serious dramatic roles like this, like The Morning Show, Morning Show like yeah. uh, Foxcatcher, Watch It Over Christmas, and yet on the US office, like we're talking genius. Have you watched the US office? Oh, I think it's rubbish. Oh, I've, I've watched about one or two episodes. No, I'm not having it. Oh, thanks for coming in, Kenny. We're no, going. no, nowhere Send near. Oh, no, no, that's a shocking re- No, it's not. It's not. I'm not having it at all. I've just made up my mind about the equaliser, I can tell you that much. If that's you, you're saying that's head and shoulders <laughs> above the original, the, uh, the office. It's which different. Is your face. They're on a par. Different. 
but it's really, really good. It's a different oh, type no, of humour. No, I might have to get back. For, I, no, I couldn't. I couldn't stomach it when I first watched it. Oh, Kenny, I've got to send you a couple of choice episodes, and you'll you'll just you'll recognise the genius. You'll genuflect at the altar of Steve Carell, the greatest all round talent in Hollywood. Honestly. Oh, but that character, that character from the office. I mean, I, I can't. I just no, I couldn't. He's, he's meant to make you squirm a little bit. Like it's <laughs> there is that to it, you know. <laughs> what would you have the uh, Richie Gervais did after the office, Rich? No, that that series. Extras. Extras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Class. Timeless. Did you like Afterlife on Netflix? Oh, very good. Uh, I, although overrated. the second one bit overrated. was a little bit um crossed the line a little bit. I thought that some of the language too much bit too much language for me in the second one. Uh, put me off a little really? bit. Yeah. Kenny, you spent 20 years in football dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Getting called most of those names, you're right. But even still, <laughs> no, it was a little bit, that language was a little bit too over the top, a bit unnecessary, I thought. Don't need I, to work so blue. I like the uh, I like the series, yeah, but just, that was a little bit too much, but OTT. Uh, James Fitz and Tralee, are you lads talking about how underrated Dennis Irwin was again? See, we talk about this. <laughs> this oh, we do, up. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. But it's a bit of the Paul Scholes. He's so over, underrated. Well, instead, we're going to talk about Phoenix, how underrated Phoenix Knights is. Just bringing it back to me. Certainly hasn't been watched enough. Uh, James you Fitz You haven't says, watched it, have you, Joe? Yeah, I've watched a lot of it. You have watched yeah, a lot yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, and it's quality. I'm, I'm totally with you. All right, all right. James Fitz, uh, you see Peter Kay's back on the circuit now. He is the life of pharmacists, yeah. Mm. Uh, James Fitz Tralee, possibly the most overrated, underrated player of all time, Dennis. Look, he definitely gets his credit here, but he uh, doesn't y- across the Irish Sea. He's definitely underrated across the Irish given. Sea. It's a given. There's no point in even rate. It's a given. Yeah. It's a given. Uh, Ferguson said Erwin is best ever signing. Bernard and Leash. I feel like Ferguson has said this about a lot of players, but I wouldn't be surprised. It's like, like when Pele used to go from country Carole. to country. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when Pele used to go said from Nicky Bolt was the best player in the world in 2002. But Phil Neville. But Pe- Phil yeah. Neville's best at the mid. Pele, whatever country he'd go to, would say, oh, they're coming for... I can see these winning the World Cup in 10 years' time. Mm. Like, no matter where he was. He could be in Guinea-Bissau. He could be in Croatia. He could be in Canada. They're definitely going to win the World Cup in 10 years' time. I can definitely see it. Uh, Owen says, Steve Finnan was as good as Ashley Cole. Erwin was on a whole other level. Players like Maldini, Zanetti, says Owen. Oh, Maldini now. There you go. Well, you said Stephen Carr at his best, at his yeah. peak. I'm with you. Yeah, it was up there, yeah. Mind-blowingly good. Yeah, Maldini's there. What were Stephen Carr's injury issues? Or was it a range of things? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I'm not, not, I can't, can't really remember now, to be honest with you. Wasn't Newca- you had quite a few injuries up in Newcastle, wasn't it? It wasn't one catastrophic no, injury. No, no, it wasn't. It was like, yeah, just kind inches. of a yeah, bad luck. I'm with Kenny, says Texter. Equaliser, top class. There An- you go. Anonymous. Yeah, I don't like that, P. It's really rankled with me, that. Almost like a, <laughs> arrogant, a bit of arrogance to that. I don't... I just think... It's a little bit tried and tested, I give you. But some of the greatest movies, formulaic. surely, are that kind of tried and tested formula. I know, but do we need another equaliser? It's a bit formulaic. Do you like Fast and Furious? Six. Ah, no, I wouldn't be mad on them now. Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't Does be mad it on equaliser them. a bit Big more about it than that, I hope? Yeah, ah, yeah. Okay. Force, force one, Joe. Get on it. Get back to me. Um, I really hope this Liam Brady doc is shown, though, because I, I remember they, they were, were making it and there were shots of Brady going back to one of the clubs he played at in Italy and he got a wonderful welcome. It was obviously like as part of the documentary let's go back and wave to the fans kind of a thing. Yeah. So it definitely has been made and it was in the schedule. I don't know what happened there. We'll have to dig out the answer. Because Liam actually again we're, we've got, we've got, Liam on, referenced yeah. that on the World Cup didn't he? I was watching uh, one of the games was, he was on um, post match. they were talking about their favourite World Cup goals and Liam referenced the Tardelli goal in the 82 World Cup final which was, okay, fair enough. But there was the, the story behind it was very interesting because uh, Liam had just signed for Juventus that season that they won, the, the Italians went on to win the World Cup. So a lot of the, the nucleus of that Italian squad which won the World Cup were at Juventus were his kind of okay. teammates and he was kind of very close to them. So, yeah, he was kind of engaged in that in, in terms of that Italian win. He was delighted for the lads and obviously didn't feel part of it, but it yeah. kind of had a bigger effect on him. So that was very interesting. That, that, again, that's just another little way in in terms of... Because, Rich, half the reason we got onto that, uh, we started talking about Zidane and then Irish players come... I can't remember. Anyway, we got to a point where one of the reasons we were very keen to see the Brady documentary is, and I suspect you're in this boat as well, because Kenny and I certainly are, is with Brady, I've got about 10, 15 of his goals in my head, club and country. But in terms of like seeing his effect on a game across 90 minutes very routinely... That footage isn't there, and I certainly haven't seen enough of him in Italy, which was obviously best league in the world at that time. So I think it's a documentary that needed to be made. So I just hope there's lots of footage in it. Are you gone, Richie? 
British security doesn't fit as strongly as you, John. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> just jump ship there. It's just disappeared, actually. Yeah, you're fully gone. Richard, I just had Richard just may change the record, Joe, before he went off our screens there. It but he's really... unique. I think the point was he's a, a unique in terms of his career. That's the point we we're making, Joe. An Irish it? point of view. Yeah, from yeah, an Irish yeah. point of view, in terms of the success at Arsenal, then the jump to Italy at that time, the amount of success and the longevity of his career over there. You know, it's not yeah, com- yeah. it's not comparable, is it, in terms of any other Irish player that I'm aware of, and even kind of British players of. Uh, of that time uh, Rush Jimmy went. Graves Rush went but had a said it's like a different country didn't have country. a great time yeah didn't have a particularly good time did no, no, he bounce back it's tougher to go then yeah so somebody says lads I saw the uh, famous Mark Robbins goal that saved Fergie's job just the other day must have been an anniversary or something I had never noticed the pass by Mark Hughes before Jesus Christ it was absolutely delicious outside of the foot curled around both centre backs what a player Sparky oh, he's a bull did you play against him yeah, yeah. Oh Strong man. Yeah, another one I just couldn't. Big arse. Just had to take a big step back away from. Just another one of them I just had to take you had to take a step back. You couldn't physically, I couldn't engage with him. So it was a case of just letting him have it and then just wait for your opportunity to just try a little toe poke, a little intercept. So strong. And God rest him, uh, Viali was the uh, was the same. Strong as it's well. Physical. Yeah. yeah, not the quickest over you, but back to goal. Joe, when he, when he put his arms out, forget it. You know, you could really feel his strength when he kind of banged you, you know, with his arms. Oof. Right. You know, sometimes you think, whoa, forget it. Yeah. You know, you think there's no point. Because I would think of Hughes and Viali and they have that, that similar glutes, backside, thighs. Yeah. lower body, yeah, lower body uh, strength, yeah. Have you lost a lot of weight since you played, by the way? Because looking at you now, I'd say you're, you'd be too slight to compete with that. Were you, had you more on I you? I couldn't. No, I couldn't compete with it. I never could, to be honest were with you. you heavier so as a footballer than you are now? No, probably about this. There's not much in it. Jeez, Maybe a couple of pounds more. But you're very slight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I couldn't. Uh, yeah, I couldn't compete with that kind of physical, that kind of upper body strength. So you have to find a different solution for me. Anyway, you know, you got to be clever. You got to yeah, anticipate things. You got to small little interceptions or anticipate where their neck yeah. next touch is going. Don't let them feel. You know that type of thing because like I'd, I'd say now if we were doing some media former footballer charity match I'd stick McCormick there up on, up top on you and say Richie <laughs> dominate Enum. dominate and bully him bully him he won't like it he won't like it <laughs> <laughs> right the game. we should uh, we should push on the news round as ever is with thanks to Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day uh, Richie I'll let you blitz through a few because naturally <laughs> is he back he's back yeah no he's back he's back he's back I'm back in yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll let you blitz through a few stories Rich to get the ball rolling Cool, yeah. Munster assistant coach Dennis Leamy has poured cold water on links with Springbok hooker Malcolm Marks. The 28-year-old is currently playing his trade with Japanese side Kubota Spears. However, Leamy says there is no truth in the stories linking Marks to Munster. Mossy Lawler, though, will be returning to the province next season as skills coach. Lola will leave his role at Connacht at the end of the current campaign. And the bad news keeps on coming for Ulster with Marty Moore requiring surgery on a torn anterior cruciate ligament in his right knee. Robert Balakoon and Sean Reffel have also been ruled out of Saturday's Heineken Champions Cup trip to La Rochelle with respective hamstring and ankle injuries. Meanwhile, Matty Ray suffered a foot injury while playing for Ulster A last weekend and he too will be missing when they go to France. Ulster will be in action on the same day as Ireland's Six Nations meeting with Italy. Their trip to the Celsi Sharks was postponed to, uh, due to illness back in October of course a spate of players and officials struck down at that stage but it's been rearranged for Durban on Saturday February 25th and League One side Charlton are hoping to cause a major upset in tonight's Carabao Cup quarterfinals they've made the trip to Old Trafford to play Manchester United Cobby Minu, the 17 year old is in the Manchester United midfield Tom Heaton starts in goal for them tonight in a much changed side and up top for Charlton is uh, Miles Leeburn son of Carl who was formerly of Charlton Athletic as well, and I think a former teammate as well of Mr. Kenny Cunningham there. Tonight's other quarter final sees Newcastle entertain <laughs> Leicester, and both games are underway at eight. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> Talking about centre forwards, like it actually pin you physically, just absolutely bully you. Carl Leiborn was an absolute giant monster of a, yeah. of a man. I was a great, lovely lad, great lad. Great lad. Was a teammate of mine for a couple of years. Lovely fella. There's a text in from Ryan Clare. This has blown my mind a touch. He says, Dennis Irwin was 25 years old in 1990, but not part of the World Cup squad. Hard to believe. That's amazing. Did Gaz, uh, did Gaz, uh, Gaz Kelly go to the, how did that work out? 1990. Er, 1990. 1990. Oh, it was Chris Morris, wasn't it? Dennis was Chris still at Oldham. Dennis was still at Oldham yeah. at 25. Just, yeah. He's about to move. Tour, just about to, yeah. So 25 year old Dennis Irwin, not good enough to play at the World Cup in Italian 90. That's mind-blowing. 25. He was better than Chris Morris at that stage, though, to be fair. That is mind-bending. 
Yeah, it just goes to show you, I've never bought into that, lads, in terms. We've seen it before with players. I'm the oh, he's playing at a certain level, championship. Oh, you can't really... And then suddenly makes the jump to a bigger club. And within like two, three months, suddenly, oh, well, the perception's different, isn't it? It's true. Oh, no, he's playing with true. a big club now and you view him differently and suddenly they're in. Still the same player. It takes, a, ch- it takes a skilled manager to look at the player and look past the level Yeah, sometimes. I think so. Yeah, uh, I think texting so. from Desmondo in Santry. Lads, the best potter on screen is Patrick Swayze's character in Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Uh, <laughs> Excellent knowledge. Uh, I used to love Kenny coming in for the news round, but that US comment, US office comment, is lazy analysis, Kenny. Don't compare it to the UK, which is also excellent. They are two different shows. Go away, watch season two in full, and come back to us with a full report next right. time you're in, says Mick and Tala. Right, I did. Now, that, I had, didn't make that comment off the back and not having seen it. I did watch few episodes. Uh, the bones of an episode once. Uh, no. My initial reaction was, oh, God, no. Got to stick with Get it. Get me away from this. Conan Limerick, Kenny doesn't like American Office. My hereto now unwavering admiration for him has been rocked. Say it ain't so, Joe. Look, Con, I agree with you. It's a difficult moment for all of us. Uh, equalizer is very good, says Owen. A more, uh, more simple, a more simple type in Clontarf. Very good. That's some, all I said. Some That's nice twists, some nice twists and turns. Denzel, top notch. Come on, Owen. You know, exactly. Pete. That should be directed to Pete <laughs> behind the window there. <laughs> uh, yeah. In fairness, all the text in are saying equalizer is okay. I just look at a movie like that, and I there's just a stench of formulaic off that. I'm not going to waste my time. You know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even bother. Formula, formula works. Most movies, you can see coming a mile away a little bit. Very few now. Oh, that was a twist. Or that was, you know that was very the, interesting. You know the Sixth Sense that... Uh... Oh, the Sixth Sense. What a kicker that is. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> no, that's... Yeah, you're right. But they're few and far between, aren't sure. they? Do you know what I watched over Christmas is the more recent... Elf. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope you watch this A Wonderful Life. We yeah. had the conversation as well, Rich, didn't we? Like, uh, uh, Floyd came out. Why did I come into the question? I can't imagine. Uh, have you James seen... James Stewart, yeah. unbelievable. Now don't, now, don't go into, like... James Stewart. I'll oh. take him over Denzel Washington, to be fair. How is that man so... Char- the charisma coming off James, James Stewart, Stewart is oh. frightening. Unbelievable. I watched the modern, the most recent Little Women, Saoirse Ronan. Really? As Joe. That is top, top, top. That is, like, in terms of an interpretation of a book, that you know, is No, It's perfection. one of those things, uh, Saoirse Ronan's probably one of those ac- uh, actresses, whereas I don't, wouldn't know too much about the movie, but if I see her name uh, attached to it, I'll watch it. I'd really recommend this. Even if, I mean, if you're an Equalizer fan, Little Women mightn't jump off the page at you, but I would recommend this. No, Have you seen it, Rich? Uh, no. Okay. No. I'd really recommend mind. it. She'd done right. a film, Saoirse Ronan and Rich. Do you remember she was like, uh, was set like back maybe 50, 60 years ago. It was a young girl in the country, moved to uh, America, made a life over there, came back. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah. Cotton to Bean book, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sh- Hang on, Pete was an extra in it, I'm just hearing. What? See, he knows his movies. Say again, Pete. An extra? He was on the boat. Eating soup right beside her. What? Pete's, good look, Pete's, Pete's a good looking man. It's a bit sad, isn't it? It's a bit sad, isn't he it? He took the soup. <laughs> so he knows his movies. I thought he was going to say like a role of some significance there. Like I was actually at a <laughs> you know, two. <laughs> yeah. An extra. Yeah. Well, an extra. But he, lo- <laughs> but he likes to do sound and news talk just because like. Peter, you. Are you, you, than that, are you routinely an extra and stuff? Are you one of those guys? No. You're not like in the Vikings down in Wicklow all the time. No. <laughs> She's an extra. I have to dig that out now. What about the that. Kingdom of Heaven? Were you an extra in that? Army about 300,000, wasn't it? Orlando Bloom. Yeah, he's chatting away there. I can't hear him. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. I can't remember where we were. The women. No. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah. I'm not, there was I'm the Winona Ryder version back in the 90s, which is fine, but this was a notch above. Just caught her over Christmas. Around, I think she's a great actress. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, Richie, <laughs> yeah. there's just no need to segue. What's next? Uh, what is next? Uh, João Felix has moved to Chelsea is nearing oh. completion. The Portugal forward is on his way to London to complete a medical with terms agreed for his loan from Atletico Madrid. Chelsea are going to pay Atletico €11 million Euro and cover his entire wage packet until the end of the season. Perhaps oh. crucially though, before leaving, Felix is to extend his Atletico contract until 2027. £10 million for a, what, a six-month loan? Yep. It's the going rate, Kenny. Another forward who can't play uh, down the middle. I mean, I like João Felix. Don't get me wrong. He's a lovely footballer. Had a good World yeah. Cup. Yeah, he's actually the type of player, uh, Graham Potter, 
I, I can understand he'd appreciate that kind of versatile operate off the flank centrally in the pockets you know that type of kind of low maintenance player you can't really pigeonhole him into one position on the pitch so I can see it in that respect but I don't think they're particularly lacking rich in that area of the pitch at those type of players when you think of like Havertz and Mount, ZH, Pulisic. You could argue they've got a few. And what they're crying out for really is, well, we know what they're crying out for, a natural number nine and a more of an orthodox central midfield player. And he doesn't fall into either of those brackets, does he? It's kind of more of the same. They float around. Yeah. Uh, somebody asking about uh, Viali and his popularity. Well, incredible outpouring, obviously because yeah. he died young and it's tragic, but seemed to be uh, very fulsome and genuine in, in the things people were saying about yeah. his personality and I couldn't speak like in terms because I didn't, didn't uh, know him at all so I'd be very similar to everybody else obviously you form an opinion about people you know, how, how, you, how they you know, interviews they give or little snippets that you see but for me I suppose yeah, there's another layer onto that is you play against them on a football pitch mm-hmm. and you gain an impression uh, from that not that you're having kind of conversations with them like when the ball's out of play or anything like that but just in terms of how they carry themselves on the pitch and I, and he was another one I liked in terms of you know no kind of play acting you know pl- play the game man's game you know he hit you you hit him picked himself up got, got on with so that that type of player I always felt yeah kind of yeah you'd respect that mm. and then obviously you listen to people talk about him it doesn't surprise you you know you form a little bit of an opinion you think well the, the, way, the way that he played you know if he takes that off the pitch and yeah, so it didn't surprise me at all. Yeah, it was actually very touching. I thought some of the some of the interviews, and even like uh, was it the Chelsea? I don't know if you saw it, Rich Chelsea, um, yeah, Manchester Chelsea, City, City, and you know the kind of minute signs. We've seen a lot of them, you know, of late. To, obviously, it's, you know, you know, it's a kind of uh, repeat itself uh, uh, quite a bit. But that one in particular for me, you could sense everybody and everybody in the stadium, supporters and players. Kind of really engaged with it, you know. It kind of ooh, touched it a little bit. Oh, this feels it was very moving. Diff- that. Feels a bit different, doesn't it, Rich? So yeah, I that think- one in particular. That one in particular on Sunday was, was very moving. Yeah. There was a lovely story I heard it recounted of him this, this evening. I know we're probably against time, yeah. but as a podcast host, he does a music podcast. But his wife is a teacher, and she was a teacher in London who followed nothing about football, knew nothing about football, but she happened to be the teacher uh, where one of Gianluca Vialli's kids was, you know, uh, in her class. And he said, parent teacher night, the two parents came along, Mr. and Mrs. Vialli. And he was he was the guy who, when he left, he left with a nice kiss on the top of her hand as he walked away. Mm. And he, he only he could pull it off because mm. he had that kind of nature about him. And she walked away from not knowing about football at all to completely starstruck by him because he's just that engaging in character. Something. Like I wouldn't re- recommend you or I kiss a teacher's hand at the parent teacher meeting. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I'm, I'm stuffing tenors into their hands, Joe, to be honest with you. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, are out of time. Go on. I've got to say, Jenny, you're just apologising profusely, aren't you, for the behaviour of kids? <laughs> He's not like that at home. <laughs> uh, Richie, thank you very much. Nice and lads. Kenny Cunningham back on the uh, football show after nine o'clock.